Oh, did you cut? Is he? Shh. Yeah. Shh. Be quiet. Ask Firebase 14 with Kerb. Take one. Hello and welcome to Ask Firebase, the show where you ask questions with the hashtag Ask Firebase. And do I got to do the thing? I gotta, this, is, this is the hashtag Ask Firebase. I am Todd Kerfelman. I'm on the developer relations team. I spend most of my time eating snacks, um, but occasionally do some iOS stuff. And so with that, let's get into some of your questions. This question comes from Sam Matthews on Twitter. And Sam writes, hey, Ask Firebase. Hashtag, I'm a huge fan. Oh, well, thanks, Sam. That's really nice. So, great question. Moving on, we... Oh, oh, wait, sorry. There's, there's a second line here. Uh, are there official plans to create a data persistence solution for React Native? Please say yes. So, what I can tell you, Sam, is that there is a very good open source library out there called Firestack, written by Ari Lerner. He's basically bridged, like, all the Firebase SDKs with React Native. Now, I haven't used it myself, but David East has said that Ari is like this crazy genius who has put all this stuff together, and David is already way smarter than me. So by the transitive property of very smart people, I think this is probably a library worth looking into. So it's called Firestack, and we will include a link for it uh, down below in the description. Great question, Sam. Thanks for asking. Looks like we got another question coming in. So this question comes from Isherpreet Singh on Twitter, who writes, Hey, Ask Firebase, how do I do word searching in the database? Good question. Uh, so word searching is not something that is supported right out of the box. However, you can do this with a library called Elasticsearch. And we have a blog post that we'll link to below that's all about how to do this. Apparently it's kind of old. I think it was written in like PHP 3, but oh, no, okay, it's not that old. It was written in Node.js. Um, so hopefully you can still take a look at it and it can give you some information you'll need to, to do this kind of thing. Hey, great question. Here's one more. So this question comes to us from Beneath on YouTube, who asks, hey, ask Firebase, hashtag, is there a way to differentiate between debug time analytics and release version analytics on iOS or Android? So very good question. There are a couple of ways you can do this. Now, by default, Firebase Analytics will allow you to filter any of your events that it records by app version. So what you can do is if you're incrementing your app version as you're sort of testing your release version and your debug version, you can start to filter by app version just to make sure that you're looking at sort of your release numbers or make sure you're looking at the ones in development. Now, obviously, sort of as you keep incrementing build numbers, maybe this starts to get a little confusing. So another trick that I sometimes like doing is setting a user property on the device for people that are doing development or testing. This would basically be something that either you could hard code in and then remove before you release or through some mystical key command on the device itself kind of activate the secret mode that allows you to sort of label a user as a debug or test user. Once you've done that, you can then set a user property that this is not a real person, it's a development or test person, and then you can filter all your events by that user property as well. So those are a couple of techniques that I've heard out there. Give one of those a try. Very good question. Thanks for asking. Now let's do one more question. So this, the, so close. <laughs> I got it right up until the beginning. So this question comes to us from Nick Chong on YouTube who writes, Hey, Ask Firebase, how do I add remote message delegate in iOS? The snippet in the docs is showing an error in Swift 3. Uh, so thanks for checking in, Nick. The answer is that basically try the samples now and they should work. It turns out when we updated our samples for Swift 3, there were one or two stragglers that still loved Swift 2.3 and wanted to stay there, but we, we upgraded them. So take a look, Firebase Cloud Messaging, the sample for, for Swift should now be on Swift 3 and everything should be working. Thanks for checking in. Hopefully everything's working for you now. According to my watch, we have time for another... Where'd my watch go? This next question comes to us from Ishan on YouTube who writes, Hey, Ask Firebase, what if there are two types of users in my app? For example, in a ride sharing app, there's a rider and a driver. How will I authenticate them and take them to different UIs? So, good question, interesting question. Basically, when you authenticate a user using Firebase Auth, all you really get back is, is a user ID that you can then use to identify that user in subsequent visits. If you want to distinguish between them, like say one is a rider and one is a driver, that is work that you are going to have to do on the server. Now, this could be something that you set up within the Firebase database. For instance, with an admin type of user, you can just put people in different categories and then Firebase can look up within the database whether they're a rider or a driver and then deliver different UI from there. Or maybe you have your own server that actually records this kind of stuff. Either way though, Basically, this is work that you're gonna have to do on the back end. All you really get back is a unique user ID for that user. It's up to you to determine what UI that user should be seeing. All right, Ishan, thank you very much for the question. Looks like we got one more question. 
So this next question comes to us from Benjamin on YouTube, who asks, ask Firebase, I really need a tutorial on FCM on iOS. So good question or statement, as it were. There's a couple resources you should check out. First, Lawrence Maroney has done a screencast on how to get started with Firebase notifications on iOS. Definitely check that out because it basically uses cloud messaging under the hood. Second, I will be giving a presentation at the Firebase Dev Summit on November 7th in Berlin on some advanced topics for Firebase on iOS. And one of the things I will be covering is what to look for when things go wrong when trying to implement Firebase cloud messaging on iOS. This will hopefully be followed up very shortly by a blog post that you can check out as well if you prefer reading to watching videos. But if you were doing that, why are you on now? Anyway, good question or statement, and uh, let's move on. So thank you everybody for sending in all of your questions. If you have a question that you would like answered on a future episode of Ask Firebase, post it in social media with the hashtag Ask Firebase. In the meantime, if you want to stay up to date with all sorts of Firebase related news, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll be fantastic. And then you'll also get to see the Dev Summit in Berlin, which should be exciting. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm realizing this brick wall behind me is not earthquake safe at all. So I'm going to get out of here. I've been Todd Kerfelman, and make sure you stand tall on the wings of your dreams. Stand tall.